I don't know, that can't be right, you know, and panic. But listen, don't panic when I say this. Just breathe into a paper bag if you have to. Just stay calm and don't just kind of shut off and get emotional and ah! Is that the whole concept of patriotism is totally unbiblical Amen. and it's not found anywhere in scripture. Amen. How dare he? Show me. It isn't there. Totally unbiblical. And this has become like an idol in churches today. It's like an idolatry. It's a worship of the United States of America. And in fact, putting the United States of America in the place of the Lord or even above the Lord. It's out there. Now look what the Bible says. And, and I could preach on this all night, but let me just show you. Look at Isaiah chapter 40, verse 15. And let's see what God thinks about our nation, how important it is to be an American. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 40, verse 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket. You, know, you ever heard that expression about something being a drop in the bucket? That, this is where it comes from, this verse. He said, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Now, what is he saying there? Okay, here's what he's saying. If you're carrying a bucket of water, you go down to the river, you fill up a bucket of water, and one drop falls out, nobody cares. Nobody says, go back and do it again. You lost one drop. If you drink a glass of water and one drop remains, it doesn't matter. It's meaningless. God's saying, that's what I think of your nation. How, you know, your patriotism, your pride, your national pride. He said, it's like a drop of a bucket. And then the next thing he compares it to is the small dust of the balance. He's saying, basically, you go to the store and you buy a piece of meat and they put the meat on the scale. You don't say, oh, wait a minute, there's a speck of dust on the scale. You expect me to pay for that dust? <laughs> Wipe that dust off and then weigh the meat unto me. Wouldn't that be foolish? And Why? Because that dust, the small dust of the, of the balance, the small dust of the scale is meaningless. It's not affecting the price in a meaningful way. The drop of water in the bucket is not affecting it in any meaningful way. When you talk about a drop of a bucket or a, or a drop of water on a hot stove, you're talking about things that are so small, so minuscule, so meaningless that they're not even worth mentioning or talking about. And God basically says, the nations, that's what they are. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beasts thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. He said, you could burn the biggest forest in the world and burn all the beasts of a whole nation, every animal. It's not enough of a burnt sacrifice to give the Lord all the honor and praise that he deserves. And then it says in verse 17, all nations, all, all nations before him are as nothing. But is this what people believe today in churches in America? Is this what the churches believe and teach? No, of course not. But God said, well, all nations before him are as nothing. Wait, no, that's giving them too much credit. They're counted to him less than nothing. And vanity. I mean, just in case you didn't get it, when he said it's nothing and it's less than nothing, vanity. I mean, how could he say it any stronger? I don't think that he could have been any stronger here about what he thinks of the nations. The nations. What, what does it mean to him? How, how important is it to him? what nation we're from or, or what nation we fly the flag of. How much does that matter to him? It matters to him so little that he just spends three verses just trying to explain in the most extreme language possible how meaningless it could possibly be. Less than nothing? I mean, that's a pretty extreme statement. But yet today we go to churches. I mean, I just saw a picture of a church yesterday. And it was like the whole church 
It had like these gigantic American flags, like gigantic sideways, you know, the giant sideways, like, you know, they must have been 12 feet tall, these sideways American flags. And then it had like 10 American flags lined up. And then it had like a floral centerpiece, red, white, and blue flowers. And it's just, it looked like it was ready for a campaign speech. <laughs> I mean, it looked like it was ready for some dictator or something to come in and just, you know, and for everybody to just be like, ah, ah, you know, in some worship of government. And it's like, that's a church. Why, why don't you emphasize Jesus Christ and, and get off this patriotic? It's not biblical, folks. And look, if I'm wrong, show me where I'm wrong. Show me where I'm wrong. This is why you never hear sermons on patriotism, because there's no Bible. I mean, we're all told, be patriotic, patriotism, and fly the flag, and pledge of allegiance, and all this stuff. But you never hear a sermon teaching us why to be patriotic, because there's no Bible to base it on, okay? And then, one time, my wife told me, she's like, I found this sermon on patriotism. I'm like, what? Like, what's it going to say? We downloaded it, and it was some just backwoods hillbilly preacher. And he was, and the sermon was called, The Spirit of Patriotism. <laughs> and the guy was just so, it was the most incoherent. He just would tell a Bible story that had nothing to do with patriotism and just be like, you know why? Because it was the spirit of patriotism. Didn't he? What were some of the stories he told, Juju? Was it like the, the Jacob and Esau? And just, it was just like, what in the world? He just told all these stories. He's like, this is a spirit of patriot. It was like, what is this guy talking about? I mean, we had a good laugh, but we didn't learn anything about the Bible. That's for sure. And, and, and my friend, you know, you can get emotional. You can huff and puff and blow the house down, but it isn't biblical. And it definitely has no, why don't you take that to your little barbecue somewhere if you want? But what place does it have in the house of God? Right, in the house of God, we worship the Lord. We don't worship America. Amen. We don't worship ourselves. Right. You know, we don't worship our country. And by the way, our country is turning into a modern Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah, right. And even God's chosen nation, Israel, in the Old Testament... When they got out of line, even the chosen ones, when they got out of line, you know what he told them? He said, you know what? You're going to serve Babylon. Yeah. And it's not because he liked Babylon better than Israel or Israel better than Babylon. Because, you know, it's all less than nothing to him. Right. He doesn't care. And God doesn't have some special relationship with America where America just gets a free pass because they're America. No, God's not a respecter of persons. And to him, there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. He makes no difference between the American and the Mexican. He makes, or they are American, sorry, the, the United States American citizen and the Mexican. He doesn't make a difference. It's all the same to him. He doesn't care. If you're uh, an American or if you're a European or an Asian, or an, it, it means nothing to him. You know, it's, not, it's less than nothing to him. And, you know, there's so many people with their nationalistic pride. But I would just say to that, him that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Amen. You know, my, the country that I seek after is a country that's not of this world. You know, the Bible teaches that the country that our allegiance is to is that heavenly Jerusalem. Amen. It's that Zion up in heaven. It's the spiritual city. It's heaven. It's the Lord that we have allegiance to. But yet today, you have all kinds of pastors and all kinds of Christians, and they're on a big crusade about patriotism. And they get all upset because some guy sat down during the Pledge of Allegiance, right? And preachers are just fuming. Oh, it just makes their blood boil. Bunch of fags can walk up and down the street and parade, and they don't have anything to say about that on Facebook, do they? They don't have anything to say about that. That's fine. Oh, but this guy sat down. You married. You know what? It'll be a cold day in hell before I ever pledge allegiance to the United States of America. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. 
say, well, yeah, but you just don't appreciate what you have. I appreciate what God gave me. Amen. You know who gave me what I have in America? God did. Say, so, oh, well, you, you know, these soldiers. No, 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 God gave it to me. Amen. You know why we have the freedom of speech? Because God gave it to us. Right. You know why we have the freedom of religion? Because God gave it to us. You know who I'm thankful for? That I was born in a country where I still have some freedoms? I'm thankful to God. Amen. I'm not thankful to Obama. I'm not thankful to Hillary Clinton. I'm not thankful to uh, a bunch of American soldiers. I'm not thankful to any of them. I'm thankful only to God because Amen. God's the one who gave it to me. Because every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Amen. And cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. I'm not going to pledge allegiance to something that changes all the time. Right. I'll pledge allegiance to God because he never changes. Amen. I'll pledge allegiance to Jesus Christ because he never changes. Amen. I'll pledge my allegiance to the Bible because it never changes. Amen. This country changes all the time. It's constantly changing. You know what? My grandfather, who went and fought in World War II, earned a Purple Heart, earned a, uh, uh, other medals that I don't worship or anything like that, but he earned some medals. He got a letter from Admiral Nimitz, and he was commended, and he had the medals. Here's what he told me. He said, if I would have known what this country was going to turn into, he said, I wouldn't have wasted the best years of my life over there fighting for it. I would have done something else. But he has the right to say that because he was over there. When he was 17 years old, killing people, he has the right to say that. Well, you know what? I have the right to say it too. Amen. That I don't want anything to do with what our country represents. Amen. I, you know what? I'm not going to fly an American flag. I'll fly the Jesus flag. Amen. But there isn't one. So I'll just do it verbally. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, look, we need to understand that God is not impressed with the United Sodom States of America. You know what? And you can sit there and say, well, you went over to Botswana and South Africa and you got persecuted because you don't have the same freedoms over there that you have over here. Right. But that's not because our government wanted to give us freedom. It's because we still have it from a long time ago and they're trying to get rid of it. And in fact, how do you think I felt about the United States of America when I found out after being arrested and deported that it was the United States government? that it was their idea to arrest and deport us, right. and that they were the ones paying for it, and that they were the ones who were behind it. And they're the ones that were calling. Look, listen to what these people say. I went back, you know, once I got home and I had time to kind of sit down and think about everything, I went back and listened to the words of Minister Jigaba of South Africa, and I listened to the words of these politicians in Botswana and South Africa, and they talked about speaking with the U.S. Embassy, about us and speaking to the United States government about us and what they do they kicked us out and then we get a we, we get the document proving that on September 21st exactly two weeks ago today two weeks ago today that the United States Embassy in South Africa gave eight thousand dollars to our arch enemy over there that persecuted us that was responsible for the whole thing all of the persecution against us in South Africa and Botswana was initiated by this gay SA radio and they received eight grand from the United States Embassy in South Africa who's supposed to be there protecting us. They're giving eight grand to people to persecute. Look, the United States government is paying to persecute missionaries in South Africa and Botswana who were there for one reason, a soul winning marathon. We weren't even there to talk about homos, but our government is so obsessed with perverting the whole continent of Africa, you know, that that's all that they wanted to make it about, even though they had nothing to do with that. And in fact, you know, when I went on that radio station and got arrested, you know, I'm not the one who brought up homos, did I? No, they brought me in there and they, so how do you feel about homos? <laughs> they did, is that what happened? You were there. I didn't go in there and say, all right, let's talk homos. You know, I'd rather talk about the gospel. I'd rather talk about Jesus. I'd rather preach just about anything more wholesome than that. No, that's what they want to talk about. And so our government was behind it. 
our government was persecuting us over there, they would love to do the same thing to us over here. There's only one thing stopping them, the First Amendment, right. which wasn't their idea. It was God's idea. Amen. And you know what? These bunch of politicians that are running our country right now, they would love to take away our freedom of speech and make it illegal and call it hate speech. And that's what they're working on doing. You say, well, but Pastor Anderson, that's just the government. The, the, but the people of America are great people. No, they're not. This is a sinful, wicked nation. And the people are just as wicked as the government. That's why we have the government. It's a representative government, folks. It represents us. You want to look in the mirror of the spiritual condition of America? Look at our politicians that we elect. And when you see all that corruption and decay and sin and iniquity, realize that's a reflection of the people in this. Look, if our country were righteous, we wouldn't even have these kind of people. Look at the candidates. And then ask yourself the morality of our nation. I mean, look at all the candidates. I don't care if it's, if you want, what, who do you want to talk about? You can talk about Hillary Clinton. You could talk about Donald Trump. You could talk about Gary Johnson. Just wicked, ungodly, filthy people. And you know what? It's a reflection of the people in our country that that's who they pick. That's who they want, people like that. Sorry, am I stepping on your little Republican toes tonight? You know what? That is a reflection of our, well, but, but, but America is a, a godly people. Really, is that why one out of four women have already murdered their own baby through abortion? Because we're such a godly nation? Is that why there's more people living together in sin than married now? There are more people just living with someone that they're not married to. That It's more than 50% now. I mean, less than half of homes are, are actually a married couple. How is that Christian? How is that righteous? How is that godly? And you know what? Our country is living on past glory. We have a name that we live, but we're dead. And so, yeah, do we enjoy freedoms and liberties in this country? No thanks to the people running our country. It's all thanks to God Amen. and Him alone. And it's all thanks to people from the past. Our generation, I mean, if you gave our generation their way, they'd tear up the Constitution and bring in the United Nations, one world, you know, ridiculous environmental, you know, agency of Sodom and whatever. You know what I mean? I mean, the young people today have no understanding of, of, of what our country is supposed to be about. They have no understanding of biblical morality. And it's only going to get worse and worse and worse. And you're swearing to... to, to have allegiance to this thing for the rest of your life or something? I mean, how long is that pledge good for? Is that just for the day or is that for the week or is it for your whole life? I don't know. I don't know, but I'm telling you, man, we're going downhill fast in this country. But you know what? I'm not going downhill. My family's not going downhill. Our church isn't going downhill. Look, our church is growing and thriving. Look around. This is Wednesday night. This is the Wednesday night service, packed, right? Sunday morning, packed. Sunday night, packed. Show up for soul winning. The church vans, packed. The cars are packed. Everything that we're doing is succeeding and growing and thriving. Look, my family's prospering. I hope your family's prospering. I'm growing spiritually. I hope you're growing spiritually. You know what? We don't have to fail. Amen. We can actually be more than conquerors through Christ. But you know what? When you attach yourself to the USA as just, you know, oh, it's all about America and patriotism. You know what? You're grabbing onto a sinking ship. That's right. Get in the lifeboat with me. Let's get out. Yeah. And look, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying, you know, to necessarily physically leave the United States. I don't think it's to the point where that's necessary because we still have the First Amendment, thank God. And hopefully, we can keep that our whole lives. We can keep the First Amendment and stay here forever. You know, I, I hope that I go to the grave in Arizona. Amen? It'd be great. I don't want to go anywhere. You know, I'd rather stay here, say, love it or leave it. No, because I was born here, and I belong here. Why don't the bunch of weirdos leave, and I can stay here? I don't have to go anywhere. God, you, well, but, you know, no, because God owns it all. 
God, God wants me here. God likes me here. God likes you here. God's people belong here. And you know what? We can succeed. We can grow. We can thrive. I'm not pessimistic about life. I'm not pessimistic about my family or church or anything. But uh, look, our nation put a fork in it. It's done. Yeah. It's game over. Right. <laughs> you know, so just get off. The, so quit worshiping it. Amen. Quit the idolatry of just the, the worship of, I mean, I literally, you're not even going to believe, I'm going to tell you this, but you're not even going to believe me. I sat in an independent fundamental Baptist church and this guy came in, this guest preacher, and he was a Filipino American. And so he was talking about how he was so glad to be in the United States and, and you know, it was better than the Philippines and just, you know, praising the United States. And he preached a whole patriotic sermon. And the sermon was called something along the lines of I love America or something like that. And he literally, I kid you not, and he said it repeatedly because I kept thinking like, you know, am I hearing this guy right? Like, did he just say that? And when he said it, he said it multiple times, and you could have heard a pin drop because everybody was kind of like, whoa, I hope that's not what he just said. He literally said, I'm an American first and Christian second. And he said it repeatedly because he said, you know, there's so many people, they have like another interest group. You know, they say they're a Filipino American or an African American you know, Muslim American, Christian American. I'm just American. Or that, that was the title of the sermon. I am an American. That was the title. I am an American. And he literally said twice, he said, I'm an American first, Christian second. I mean, what in the world? But that's the kind of stuff that you hear. That was an independent, fundamental, King James, soul winning Baptist church. And when he said it, the, the place kind of went silent because everybody knew that's not right, what he just said. <laughs> then he said it again. And everybody's just kind of like, well, I'm just going to pretend I didn't hear that. <laughs> and then he kept on, he continued with the sermon, but it was weird. It's very weird. But, you know, I, when, it, when it's not I love America Sunday, it's I love Israel Sunday. You know, and it's just, it's just all this glorification of nations and, and just a, a glorification. And look, it has to be coming from somewhere. I mean, it didn't come from the Bible. If so, please see me after the service and correct me. Uh, where patriotism is in the Bible, how I need to be waving the flag and pledging allegiance and, and um, cheering for my country as they bomb others as if it's like a football team that, that is from my hometown or something, okay? You know, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I, you know, I'm open to, to being corrected on this. But, you know, where, where was I going with that? Somebody help me out. Does anybody read? Yeah, Israel. Yeah, that's a good subject. We could, go on, we could talk about that for a while. But, you know, all, the, all, these, all these nations and just, you know, uh, 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 a glorifying of America, glorifying of Israel, and, and just uh, this, this, this stuff. Uh, I forgot where I was going, but I'm going to go somewhere else, okay? I just <laughs> I thought of something totally different. Okay. Oh, yeah, where is it coming from? See, you just got to give up, and then it comes to you. Okay, where is it coming from? If it's not coming from the Bible, I'll tell you where it's coming from. Indoctrination. You grow up, you're four years old, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation. You know, that, I'm not going to finish it because I swore I never would, right? You don't want, I don't want to break my promise that fast. Good night. <laughs> but anyway, that was for demonstration purposes only, and I didn't make it to the end. So you're taught your whole life, you're brainwashed to just wave the flag, and, and, and anyone who doesn't is demonized. Oh, these evil people, you know. No, you know who's evil? People who hate the Lord. They're evil. That's right, right. But somehow you could hate the Lord, you could hate Jesus, but as long as you served your country, you somehow get a pass. But God's not a respecter of persons. Right. Plus, m most of the people, and, and here, this will make some people mad, but oh well, most of the people that go into the military these days are serving their wallet. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Every person that I've ever personally known who joined the military flat out told me it was for the money. Every single one. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't people out there who have, you know, their, their blood flows red, white, and blue and everything. 
But I will say this, everybody that I personally talked to just said, well, it's a, it's a living. It's good money, GI Bill. And funny, the veterans are nodding their head. Yeah, money, getting paid. And look, yeah, a lot of people are deceived by it and they think that, that America is, is the savior of the world and all that, you know, bringing in feminism and bringing in sodomy and bringing in sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Yeah, I know, I know there's some people who actually believe that, but a lot of people are just doing it as a job. And it's not even the most dangerous job. In fact, being a logger is more dangerous. Being a, a small aircraft pilot is more dangerous. Being a cab driver is more dangerous. Being an electrician is more dangerous. Being a long haul trucker is more dangerous. Look at the stats, it's true. You're more likely to get killed being a truck driver, okay? So the bottom line is we need to get a biblical viewpoint on these things and cut through the brainwashing and cut through the programming and get this programming right here that says, you know what, when the nation goes bad, God doesn't care who wins. And if he says the king of Babylon's going to win, well, you know what, just shut up and obey the king of Babylon and start flying that Babylonian flag because you know what, your flag doesn't matter anymore because God decided that you're going down. Amen. That's, what it, that's what this whole chapter is about. And nobody liked it then, and nobody likes it now. And in chapter 28, they all get mad about it, and they, they you know, of course. But the reason why these pastors love to get on Facebook and huff and puff about their patriotism is because everybody likes it. Nobody gets mad when you fly an American flag. They only get mad when you don't. <laughs> nobody gets mad when you get up and say, oh, it really chaps my hide that that guy wouldn't pledge allegiance. They're like, I'm in America. <laughs> yeah, they're getting all kinds of likes and shares and and all kinds of praise of men. But it's funny how they don't really attack the real evildoers. You know what I mean? The people who are really messing up our country. And, and you know what? People who hate Christ, hate the Lord, hate God, those are the enemy. Amen. You know what? T today, Ru the, the, the people of Russia are not my enemy. The people of Mexico are not my enemy. I don't have any problem with Mexicans, Iranians, Iraq, I would love to see them all get saved. Amen. You know what? I just love all the nations of the world in the sense that I want the people to be saved. I want the people to be saved in, in Iraq and uh, Iran and Afghanistan. And you know what? I don't want to see them all bombed into the Stone Age. I'd like to see them get the gospel. Amen. I'd like to see the Bible get in there. I'd like to see soul winning happen there. I love, all the, I love all the nations of the world as far as the people are concerned for their souls. Don't you? Or do you just hate them because they're of some other nationality? No, I, I love those people. I, I'd like to teach all nations the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. But see, people want to brainwash you that your enemy is some guy over in some other country of some other culture, some other language, some other skin. That guy's your enemy, or he's messing up the economy, or he's the threat. But you know what? The, the real threat is right here in America. It's people who hate God. It's people who hate the Bible. It's people who hate Jesus. And you know who that is? The people that are in charge in our country. You know who that is? The people running the public school. You know who that is? The people who live on your street in many cases. So, you know, the, the, the enemy's right here, my friend. So instead of getting all worked up about being an American or not being an American, being a citizen or not being a citizen, why don't you worry about whether you're a citizen of heaven? And why don't you worry about whether your neighbor's a citizen of heaven? You know, I don't care if the, if the Mexican painting my house is a citizen of America or not, but I'd, or of the United States of America, but I'd like to get him a citizen of heaven. I'd like to get him a spiritual green card. I like to get him spiritually, uh, uh, what's that word that they always use? Some spiritual amnesty, right? Let's get some spiritual amnesty for the lost souls of Mexico. Ah, oh, but they're not legal. Who cares? Yeah, pretty soon soul winning's not going to be legal. Yeah. So what? But you know what? The devil loves for us to get all worked up about the wrong things and get all, get all into some political fight, right? Or get all worked up about somebody's skin color 
or I mean, that's that, isn't that always the thing? Even in 2016, it's still about black lives matter or they don't matter or everybody matters. It's like, who cares? But that's the kind of junk. Why don't we talk about, you know, somebody said, somebody contacted me, Pastor Anderson, do black lives matter? Hmm. <laughs> and you know what I responded? Black souls matter. Amen. I don't care about your politics and all this junk. All I care about is the Word of God, Jesus, the Bible, salvation. That's all that matters. And, 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 and my, my you know where my interest in politics come in? Is just, how can we get these people to leave us alone? Yeah. <laughs> to me, that's the only question that matters. Will they leave me alone? <laughs> and you look at the candidates, it's like, no, no, no. Right? I mean, that, because God said that the only matter with our leaders is that they would let us live a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. I, so the only thing I care about is just give us freedom. Give us the freedom to, to, to preach and raise our families and do God's will. And, and I, you know, I'm not really that worked up about other political issues. I, I you know, it, frankly, I find it boring. I, I find this a lot more interesting. Amen. This is way more interesting than Sean Hannity or Glenn Beck or Alan Combs or any of the rest of them. I don't even know if those are still the guys because I don't even keep up with it. Who's, who are the big political talk shows that people are into? What are they listening to these days out there, folks? Help me out. Rush Limbaugh still? Oh, man. That guy's got to be getting old. I just named it all, huh? Named them all. Nothing else? Vanity. Who? It's vanity. It, yeah, it is vanity. <laughs> Nobody else, huh? Nobody wants to admit that that's what they've been listening to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's time to pop in Alexander Scorby Amen. and give those guys a rest. Amen. Right? Amen. This chapter, again, you know, I, I read the first half of it. The second half, pretty much just reiterates a lot of things that we've seen over and over again in this chapter uh, and in the book of Jeremiah itself is that God is bringing judgment on Judah. He's using the Babylonians to do it. And he tells them, look, you need to just surrender. But we don't ever, these colors don't run. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? When God says to run, you better run. Yeah. And you better ask how fast, yeah. you know, as you begin to run. These colors don't run. Well, you know what? If God says they do, they do. Right. Let's make sure that we keep our focus on the main thing, which is that which is spiritual, not that which is carnal. Amen. And sure, other pastors, they're going for the easy amen right. yeah. by having the I Love America Sunday and the I Love America sermon. Yeah, they get the easy amen when they bring in the veterans and the Holocaust survivors and everybody else, yeah, they get the easy amen. But you know what? The only people that we should bring in here to speak are spirit-filled preachers. Amen. That's all, because that's all that matters. You know, this other stuff, you know, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier, Christian soldier in the Lord's army in a spiritual fight. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Lord God, thank you so much for this chapter, Lord, and thank you for a man like Jeremiah, a very unique man who preached a very unpopular message at a very unpopular time, Lord, but yet he did not compromise the message. He, he's, he endured the persecution, Lord, because he did what was right. And I pray that you would just help us to realize that everything we've heard our whole lives and been taught our whole lives isn't necessarily true, Lord.